A soccer player kicks a ball on the ground at 33 feet per second at an angle of 45 degrees. The height of the ball in feet varies with time is given by this function here, where g is 32 feet per second squared, t is the time in seconds, v0, or v0, is the initial velocity, and h0, or h0, is the initial height. What is the maximum height of the soccer ball to the nearest foot? Now, I want to be totally clear. That when I made this problem, there is something, just for those listeners, that this isn't exactly accurate. You'll find out in the second semester that this isn't the best way to measure this. Like, I've taken some liberties to um, kind of change the equation. This isn't going to be accurate for real world because you'll find out that this needs to be two different equations. But for the sake of this problem, I wanted to kind of give you an idea of how we model flight of a ball in the air. So I gave you this equation. So now let's plug in what we know. Here, this says g is 32. And so g, which stands for gravity, is 32 feet per second squared. Now, a lot of people balk at this because they say, no, it's 9.8. I know this from science. And that's true if you're talking in meters, which most science deals with meters. If you go down here to projectile motion, this is where you see these. These are what I was talking to you about. There's two equations that truly model the flight of a ball. g stands for gravity. And if you're a unit in feet, 32 feet per second squared is the same thing as 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's where the 32 comes from. That's our uh, our gravity. V sub zero, we found out in this problem right here, is initial velocity. And it says here, they kick the ball on the ground at 33 feet per second. This is our V sub zero. That's the initial velocity is 33. And because they say it kicks the ball on the ground, that means our H sub zero is the height of zero. That will go here. So basically, my equation will be, for the calculator's purposes, h of x will equal negative 1 half times 32 times x squared plus 33x. So this is the zero. It drops weight. That's the only equation I'm going to use in the calculator. Now, I want to know what's the maximum height of the soccer ball. So h stands for height, and we know that X, or X is representing T, which is time. So I'm going to plug this into the calculator. So we'll go to our graph. And we'll type in the equation. You could reduce negative 1 half and say that that times 16 as, excuse me, times 32 as being negative 16. And we'll, you'll get the same answer. So here I just leave it unreduced plus 33x. And again, if you put the plus zero for the initial height, it won't change it either. So you do that. And so here's the flight of the soccer ball here. And as I kind of told you, this is an unrealistic model. That's why it's like, wait a minute, is it only travels two feet? No, that's where you're. That's where this is kind of off because t is referring to time. This would mean the ball x is axis represents time. The ball is in the air for two seconds. So just to kind of give you a quick sketch here of the idea and label it. If this is the flight of the ball, what this, what the x represents to here is time. The ball's in the air for two seconds. The y-axis represents our height. We want to know what's the maximum height. So I'm looking for what's the highest y value. So to find that, well, calculator has a deal for the maximum. I'm going to slide this up, and you can always just move this around with the center, click on the graph, and just go up so you see that's the maximum height. And the calculator will find it exactly if you go to Analyze Graph and choose Maximum. And when the dotted line comes up, you'll go to the left and to the right. And it's right here. And the maximum, remember, is the Y value. We want to know the maximum height, not the time it occurs. The time that occurs is 1.03. The height, though, is 17 feet. So the answer here would be 17 feet as the maximum. It says round to the nearest foot, which it, the calculator gave that to us as 17. So this would be our answer here. Now, if you're wondering, how would I do this algebraically? What if I uh, don't like math as in using cal calculators or technology? What would I do to get that value by hand? Well, uh, if you remember from your algebra rules, when you're working with parabolas, which we are here, when I have a squared, I have a quadratic here because the highest power is squared. The way we find the uh, the vertex is what you'd call that point of a parabola is by negative b over 2a. That's the x value. So to find the x value, it's negative b over 2a. And then to get the y value, you just plug in the x. And so in this case, what I would do is I would plug in 
the b value is right here. So you'd say the x value, the way I'm going to get this 1.03 is it's going to be 33 divided by, now we need to reduce this. Remember how we put in, I told you it was negative 1 half times 32, which is the same thing as negative 16. It's going to be 2 times all of this, or times negative 16. 2 times your a, which our a is right now, the way I have it written as 2 times negative 1 half times 32, which basically the 2 and a half cancel, and so that means that I have 33 over 32. And if I wanted to get that as a decimal, it's going to be that 1.03. I'll prove it to you. I got a page here. 33 divided by 32. 1.03125. So the calculator rounded off. But that's the exact value. Uh, 1.03125. That's going to be more kind of this standard decimal here, the exact value of the center. Now, if I want to know the y value for the height, you plug this in. And that's how you would get it by hand. You just plug that in right there. 